смешные. Stirring the instant coffee with huge, massively huge chopsticks using big chopstick energy and the vortex method. The only true way to optimize the taste of your instant coffee at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, someone gave me Trader Joe's Instant Cold Brew Coffee. One heaping tablespoon in a mug of hot water. Let's see how this goes. Okay, not bad. It's like a step up from regular instant coffee. But not as good as the instant coffee, you know, those little instant coffee tubes. I guess it was before I stopped going to Starbucks. I had gotten a box of those instant coffee tubes. You just tear off the tube and put it in water. And it actually tastes like brewed coffee. It's the best I've ever had, but I've never had any that good since. But this isn't bad. It'll do. This reminds me of, uh, like, Boy Scouts or something, or the dorm room, and you're heating up a, a, a single a single cup of coffee with one of those little immersion heaters, and back from what I call the cup of soup days, where you just ended up with like a lot of instant stuff. If it wasn't for Boy Scouts, I probably wouldn't have a lot of instant stuff. Actually, it's, I am going to be doing some reviews of freeze-dried food that I have, for instance. You know, I bought four packs. I'm going to be doing some reviews. This is grilled chicken pad thai. And you just add hot water. I have three others. I got this from REI. Doing some reviews of the uh, freeze-dried foods. And we'll see how that goes. Well, good morning. We are expecting... We are expecting snow this morning. It hasn't started yet. And just just when I think to myself, I'm getting tired of this snow. It's really winter. It, this happens every year. By the second week of February, I'm screaming that I hate winter. But it's winter. If you don't like it, move, which I hope to be doing. And I don't like it. I've, I've always said this, too. If you, if you don't have a snowmobile or engage in winter sports, to me, winter is just an inconvenience. It's pretty right up until Christmas. After that, it's a pain in the neck. Because so I don't ski. I don't have a snowmobile. Not interested in either. I would rather be on a beach, swimming, and doing exercises, body weight exercises on a beach somewhere year-round than like just this week alone. In the past, in the past 10 days, I've probably spent six hours, six or seven hours shoveling snow. It's good exercise, but I'm over it. I'm done. Okay. Springtime, I'm ready for you. But I'm not complaining. A client gave me a bottle of Evan Williams bourbon. I really liked it. It was good. This is several years ago. It was good. Neat on the rocks with a splash of water. Making cocktails with it, including an Old Fashioned, which is one of my favorite cocktails. I really enjoy an Old Fashioned done the right way, not too sweet. But I never heard of Evan Williams before. So when the bottle was done, I went to the, in Pennsylvania, they call them wine and spirit stores. I wanted to buy another bottle of it. So what did I find when I got there? It was on the bottom shelf. And I thought, oh, this is pretty cheap. It was like 10 bucks, 11 bucks or something like that. But I've had everything 
over the years, over my life, that was on all the shelves, all the way up to top shelf stuff, Maker's Mark and all of those super aged things. But I really liked the Evan Williams, and I didn't know. I didn't know that it is the, in the store that I go to, the least expensive bourbon. And I will tell you, it is a good value. It is a very good value. I enjoy it to the point now where I will look at a bottle of Maker's Mark and I'm thinking, I really like the Evan Williams and it has nothing to do with price. I really like the taste of it. So have you ever tried it? Do you know of it? Let me know down below. What is your favorite? And have you ever discovered a inexpensive bourbon or a whiskey that that surprised you? Let me know. A little shout out to Lindy Sellers. I did put tomatoes in my dehydrator. This this was a tomato, a, a round tomato, shrunk down to about this, dehydrated, took about close to eight hours. So I have like tomato chips here. I will tell you that these are magnificent. I never dehydrated tomatoes before. And if you like the taste and tang of a tomato, dehydrate your tomatoes. Can you see that? Magnificent. Or you can put them in different recipes. I am blown away by this. I don't know why I never did it before, but I'm really happy that I did. Dehydrated tomatoes. Thank you, Lindy. <clears throat> Never take the first answer for anything in life. Ever question everything. Why wouldn't you question everything? I'm not saying be skeptical. I want you to have a healthy skepticism. Never believe the first account or the first story or the first excuse of anything. Just always be verifying. You don't have to be a ding-dong about it, but just always be verifying constantly. Why wouldn't you question everything? I was saying yesterday that I'm glad Rush Limbaugh got the Presidential Medal of Freedom. He certainly deserved it. And uh, watching that I don't know what year did that happen. Was it last year, two years ago, three years ago? I forget. Watching those few minutes really were very, very special. The man has worked hard. So my question is this, who will be the next Rush Limbaugh or will there be another Rush? Who do you think is at his level? There's many people, like he really started the more modern era of political talk radio. I don't listen to any talk radio at all of any type anymore. I haven't done that in a long time. If I happen to be in the car between 12 and 3, I would put Rush on. But who is of his caliber? What do you think? Mark Stein? Joe Paggs? Oh, put your answer down below. I'd like to see that. Elon Musk won't be getting the coronavirus vaccine because, as he states, he's not at risk. I agree. Or does Elon know something we don't know? Always be questioning. Always. When they say, line up over here, you're going to go line up over there? How has that worked out in history? This year, in 2021, commit to planting some trees. At least one shade tree and one fruit tree or a tree for each of your kids, that they know that you planted the tree for them. I planted a tree for each of my kids. And when I'm in the area of the old homestead where the kids were growing up, I look at those trees now and they're huge. They're huge. The kids will always be able to drive by that house and say, that's my tree. You see what I'm getting at? Or do it for your grandkids. You could even make it a project that they participate in. The cool thing about it is that tree is going to outlive you. You planted something. 
you know, we're talking about legacies. Plant a tree. Plant a lot of trees. I'm a huge fan of planting. Guess what? You won the election. You know why? Because you voted for yourself. Do you remember that? Remember that morning I sat here and I said, vote for yourself. It's the best thing you're going to do. You always have a good day when you vote for yourself. Why does the farmer put a plow into hard, empty soil? Because he sees the full harvest in his mind before the plow even gets near the soil. An empty field. Empty field gets plowed. In faith. And with works. And several months later, there's a crop that is filling up that field. Not just by faith, though. Because faith and works go hand in hand. There's got to be some planting that's done. And some watering. And the soil has to be prepared. You can't wish and hope for a crop to happen anywhere in life. So, why does the farmer put a plow in hard, empty soil? Because he sees the full harvest in his head. He counts the cost ahead of time. He has faith in his work that he puts in before that plow even touches the soil. So with vision, goals, and an action plan, as Jim Rohn says, it's able to count your chickens before they are hatched. Are you a Jim Rohn fan? I love Jim Rohn. Very significant figure in my life, I'd say in the past uh, 10 years. And when everybody was going to see him live and was getting his recordings and such, I, was, I wasn't listening to him at all. I was listening to Zig Ziglar. I was listening to Brian Tracy, Dennis Waitley, some Anthony Robbins, a lot of Jay Abraham, a lot of Dan Kennedy, but Jim Rohn. There was something about the guy. If you know Jim Rohn, let me know down below. I would like to hear what your thoughts on Jim Rohn are. I asked the question on Gab, do women wear head coverings of some type in your church? I got almost 300 responses from that. Talk about an unintentionally divisive question. People were like, well, we're not Muslim. We don't oppress women in my church. Uh, what's the other one? We have hair. Our hair is our head covering. Just really divisive, nasty, I don't know. Redneck, stupid answers. Not a, I'm finding, you know, it's interesting. Gab is going to go through a lot of changes. And I've been telling people, just hang in there, hang in there. It's going to change a lot. In the beginning, it's attracting low-hanging fruit in the very beginning. And you get people who aren't into discourse of any type. And they, it's an uninformed way of thinking. You get a lot of that. I am banned on Twitter, but I will say that Twitter is a much more... Well, it, Twitter is a cesspool. It, it's a, it's a pigsty. But in that cesspool, there are far more intellectual characters and far more intellectual interaction going on than on Gab at the moment. As Gab grows, like, there's a lot of these, my freedom kind of people. Okay, I get that. I get that. I understand that. The lock and load people. I get that. I understand that. But... You sound just as stupid as the lefties on Twitter. And that's what I've run into on Gab. So I'm hanging in there, and I'm watching it evolve, even in this very short time since I've been on there. So you can follow me there. The real conspiracy theorists in clown world believe that the government cares about them, the media would never mislead or lie to them, the pharmaceutical giants don't get rich from illness, and they want to cure you because they really care and politicians are just like you. And that there isn't an us-them social structure. You go ahead. You keep believing that. Yeah. Keep believing that. Men, being a builder will attract all kinds of people. Some of those you attract will be demolition experts. 
you will meet people that are better at tearing down than they are at building. I've been saying this for, what, a year now? Vet people for their desire to build, period. Vet for joy. What a, just those two things alone. There are people that everything that they touch, it turns to rubble. Everything. The number one quality in a woman for you men is this. Does she want to build with you and nothing else matters? Nothing else matters. Oh, she's so sexy. Oh, she's so pretty. Oh, my God. I just have the best time with her. Does she want to build? It's already understood that you want someone who's attractive to you, and that's in the eye of the beholder. What's attractive to me is not attractive to that person or that person or that person. So never have to defend what you like or what your preferences are in a woman. It's already understood that you'll want someone who is attractive to you, someone who is not worldly, someone who hasn't left a trail of hurt, deceived men behind her, and now you are the one. She is to be explored over a period of time consistent with the concept of date long and marry slow. And is consistent, predictable, and level in mood for six months to two years. Because anyone can be on their best behavior for up to two years. Crazy can show up as early as uh, two months, six months. But you're in love. When you are in love or infatuated, you can't see flaws and you can't see crazy. When crazy shows up knocking at your door, don't answer the door, let alone invite it in and have a seat at the dinner table. A lot of people do that. Within a couple months, they're living together trouble. Nothing but trouble. I'm done telling people. I'm done. I'd rather just say it here on the Daybreak Show. I am done coming across as a buzzkill or discouraging factor in people's lives. I'm really sick and tired of offering, volunteering truth to people who don't want to hear the truth. So guess when I get them? After they made the mistakes. And then they say, you're right. And I hate hearing that. I don't want to hear you're right. I would rather have Someone say, you are right, before the trouble starts, not after. Not after everything in their life is all rubble. The exploration phase, which is what dating and courtship is, it's not meant just for recreational. Think about it. How many people are out there just recreationally dating? Any time you spend with a woman, men, should be an exploration. Do they desire to build with you? The catch is this, though. What is your mission? If you're not a man who has a mission, why would a woman want to join you? Period. What are you building? A woman joins your mission, but she is not your mission. The exploration phase is to explore, to see if you can have something that would be permanent. Can you make it permanent? Is there a foreverness to... Can you see a foreverness? after all of the stuff, the love chemicals, wear off. And I'm not talking about after you've had sex for two months. That's why you get yourself into the trouble that you've gotten into. That's why you're alone. That's why you're not happy. Because you got onto the roller coaster. And you didn't have a formal exploration phase. Men, you need to check your thirst level in these winter months. I look on social media and I see guys that are so thirsty and desperate. You attract women, you don't chase them, number one. You don't post lame beta male memes all over social media thinking that it's going to attract women. Stop it with the wine and roses and romance. I can't keep digging your sorry butt out of your romance hole that you dug for yourself, the thirst hole. I could talk to a man for an hour, and I will give you a thirst report. Way too desperate. Stop it. That means there's something missing in your life. You need to be whole and complete before you even think of bringing a woman in your life. So, go to the gym. Make a ribeye for yourself. Create another profit center, another stream of income. Because women are making fun of you nice guys, and they use the crap out of you nice guys, especially in these hard, cold, winter, desperate months. Men, stop it. It's pathetic. Your thirst is showing. 
I would rather see your hustle than your thirst. Anyone here into trains? There is a new train trip. The U.S. is getting an epic new glass-domed train route from the Rockies to Red Rocks. You'll soon be able to explore the Rockies and Red Rocks on a luxury train journey. Starting in August 2021, it's going to take passengers on a two-day ride from Denver to Moab, Utah, winding through the Rocky Mountains and Utah's gorgeous natural arches. It makes an overnight stop in Glenwood Springs, Colorado, a town known for its hot springs and rugged Rocky Mountain views. Rocky Mountaineer, the company behind it, Behind the route operates three existing luxury trains in Western Canada. This company is known for its glass-domed trains, chef-designed menus, expansive outdoor viewing platforms, and a lack of sleeping cars. Instead, it aims to showcase mountain views during the day and deliver passengers to comfortable Cloud Lake hotel beds at night. Boy, that sounds fun. A scenic train ride. For me, trains are just transportation from A to B. But how about a deliberate train ride with great meals. You don't sleep on the train, you sleep in a hotel. I think that would be fun. Would you be interested in a train ride? Here's the catch. Prices for the two-day trip start at $12.50 per person, including a one-night hotel stay. And those departures run between August 15th and October 23rd. I think that could be fun. It's two days, though. $12.50 for this you could go on a one-week cruise for twelve fifty. Although I am not going on any, I'm not paying for any event where I have to wear a mask. I will not be. If this was a masked thing that, where they require masks, I'm not going to go on it. Cruises, they want you to have the mask. Forget it. I'll never take. I'm not going to go on a cruise ship and wear a mask. That will not be happening. Sorry. Have you had enough yet? And <laughs> with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.